Greetings, and we hope we talk sense about how do you please your people and how much should we please our people. And you're with Pastor Pedia. I'm Newt Larson. I like this subject. I find it hard to not want to please everybody. Mm. And I'm with Jeff Bogue and Jim Brown. Uh, may we now seek help on this area. How, do, how much should we please people and when do we have to go against the tide? Mm. What would you like me to say, Newt? Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to just give a talk on that. Are surveys helpful? You might think, I think this is related. In the general sense, do we do what pleases people? Uh, I actually, the you know, I, I had written down how much should we try to please our people. I wrote down we shouldn't try to please them. Um, we should hear them, listen to them, love them empathize them, but we should only seek to please the Lord. And so um, I think in, in general, in leadership, my job is not to make the congregation happy. My job is to love them and lead them. If it's something silly, if it's something benign, I, you should, don't be stubborn about that, you know, but, but as far as where we're going, what we're doing and what God has called us to, uh, the, church, the, the Church of Jesus Christ is not a democracy. Uh, it's to be led by elders, shepherds, and they lead sheep. Sheep don't vote on what shepherds do. And so it's a, I think we have to be really, really careful with this idea. I, yeah. And a few of the sheep are helping you and can call you out uh, officially. Sure. Yeah, that's right. But they're, they, ideally, they should be elder quality. They should be shepherd, lay shepherds. Yep. I think if this applies to decision making, trying to answer decisions or what's next. I think I, I'd back this up. You know, if you're sitting in, in an environment, an elder meeting or whatever your leadership council is, and you're trying to discern what's next. And so you ask for input from the people that are around you. I think first, foremost, before you ask that question, get the right people around the table. Sometimes we're trying to get people to make decisions that aren't best for that where we're seeking decisions. So get the right people around the table so that when an answer services, you're not necessarily pleasing the person. That's the best answer. Let's go with it. And I think we fall short sometimes by not having the right people around the table when it comes to decision making. Then we try to please people. Then it goes south because we weren't asking the right pool of people in the first place. And the, and the COVID condition, many churches took surveys and then people got mad when they mm -hmm. did not do what the... That was a leadership decision, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not big on surveys. Uh, surveys uh, to try to make a decision are a terrible idea. Surveys to glean information, like the reveal survey, it, those are very, very helpful at times. But if you're trying to make a decision or trying to determine a direction, surveys are gonna be divisive. Uh, they're, gonna f they're gonna make things feel like there's a winner and there's a loser. And it frankly, it, it's an illustration. It, what you're saying is, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to lead. So you guys do it for me. It's a, it's a weak leadership position to put yourself in. So I am not a big survey guy. Um, we will, in general, we will use them for very specific reasons or for very, very broad. I'm a big uh, fan of the reveal survey. If you wanted to Google that and look at it. But that's a very broad thing that gives me a, a heartbeat on some stuff. I, I would I would land where you land on that, Jeff. We do very few surveys, but we glean information from our people. Um, and be quite frank, a majority of people hate sir, to even fill out surveys, so you're not getting an honest <laughs> answer in the first place. And I, it lends itself to just so much divisiveness. Well, many of us are strong leaders. What are the dangers of leading alone? You get... <laughs> You get tunnel vision, and uh, and you can become uh, unbiblical real, real quickly because you don't have a multitude of counselors around you. And so, if you're at a, a like a smaller church or a solo pastor, I would even get a, a a group of other pastors or friends, even if they have to be outside the church, to think through and to give counsel. Uh, but you can you can get locked into that. You also can bowl over people, you know. And so, a lot of times what I found is people don't need surveyed necessarily, but they need listened to, and they have something to offer. They, ha they have an insight or they have an idea, and it may be a really, really great idea. 
So if you don't take the time to slow down and interact with them and have those conversations, you lose all of the wonder of all of that. Any leadership from a vacuum, it's, it's going to lead to dictatorship and not being a shepherd. It just, it just is. Oh, it seems like you need, I need an accountability group for my personal life and a leadership team for the church life. And I must have both. Sometimes they can overlap. But if, if you're living all alone and nobody calls you out, and maybe your wife doesn't even know, or your husband, change that. Lead yourself. Take care of yourself. What else on the... It, it, and what... I would just build off of what you just said, Newt. What I would do is, is it depends on the decision. If I'm making a decision about children's ministry, I'm going to gather people from the children's ministry to get real life input about that. If I'm making decisions about finances, I'm going to gather financial people that have a wisdom that maybe I don't have. Uh, if I'm going to make a real estate decision, um, I'm going to get the real estate people in the church. And if I don't have them in the church, I'm going to get people I trust outside the church to give me counsel on that. So it, it is the church. It's an elder board or whatever leadership structure your church has it, is one thing. But then getting down. And that's not surveying. That's gleaning wisdom and, and getting counsel oh from my. people. So good. I, I encourage every pastor to have a financial group of advisors who are in on the finances and help, because these people work with, what are some subjects where you can't worry about pleasing people? Uh, where you, you can't yield to popular demand? Right, the, the inerrancy of God's word, it's kind of the fundamentals of the faith. Uh, so in our, um, what salvation is, what the gospel is, um, I mean, it would, I would say the fundamentals of the faith. The basic doctrines. Right. Yeah. I would say high-level vision. Uh, as a leader, I think your job is to set vision. And uh, you can get input on that vision. You don't have to work in a tunnel. But like that, you don't put that out for a vote. Uh, you figure out what that is. You lead toward it. I said staff decisions. Um, just because a, a, a staff person is the most beloved person or their so-and-so's cousin doesn't mean that they're the right person to be on, uh, on that team. I personally think, this is my opinion, but I think things like voting on the pastor every two or three years is a horrible idea. Uh, most of the time they pass but when they pass with 98%, all they're thinking about is the three people who voted against them. And then they'll serve in such a way to try to keep everyone happy before the votes. It's always just constantly, i got to please the people so I can stay here. Yeah. It just lends itself to not, a, not being a, an effective leader. We do that in our marriage where I come home and ring the doorbell <laughs> yeah. and she decides. Did you make the cut or is that after this? Moment? I did four wigs, four nights in a row. <laughs> <laughs> It, it is hard. Don't don't you often feel like you're standing alone? I'm impressed. Though? You made it four out of seven. <laughs> yeah. you, you need to educate us today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> don't you sometimes feel like you're standing all alone, even if all these other things are there? You know. You know what's funny is um, I don't. I I I I feel like I have a a, a band of brothers that stand with me. And it's taken a, it takes a lot of time to build that up, but I don't feel that way. I feel like the way that our leadership works, if they have a hesitation, I listen to them. If I have a hesitation, they listen to me. We're not looking for compromises, we're looking for answers. So when I come out with a tough decision, I don't feel like I'm all by Good. myself. Now, that takes time and that takes a lot of work. So if you're two years in, you probably feel like you're all by yourself sometimes. And when you get that report back, when I have someone on, on my team that says, hey, someone will come to them and say, hey, this this is what I, I, I think about Jim, or number one, they shouldn't be doing that, but it happens. Let's be true. I've, I've had that individual who they spoke to, a staff member come in and said, I just want to let you know, that hasn't been my experience with Jim. When you hear that from a teammate that they stand up for you and you have that, yeah. that kind of, uh, what you're talking about, someone that's with you, that in encourages you and it helps you to stand even firmer in what you believe God wants you to do. If you have teammates around you that stand with you, 
there's nothing like that. I don't think you'd want to be a pastor if you didn't want to please people. And so one of our, I think, one of our strengths is our weakness because we have to, on, on, the, on the things of the Bible, this is just the New Testament. I don't know I, how you read that. Thing. Is do, it like a four or five? I do read all. Yeah. I'm not as old as you think. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think if we don't keep our grips on Scripture, we're always going to think, what if somebody doesn't like this? Right. It's harder with staff than it is with the regulars. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we hope you're pleasing people by pleasing Christ. <laughs> and that when you stand alone, it's for good reason, and that you're getting good input and are accountable to a group. You're with Pastor Pedia on the issue of being nice, but when to know how to lead and not please everybody, on the issue of standing alone in some ways, but never alone in your leadership and your love. Mm -hmm. I'm Newt Larson, Jim Brown, Jeff Bogue, Pastor Pedia. Thank you very much.